Number five, the Plague Doctor. SCP-049 is a humanoid-ish entity. Around 6'2 in height, it bears the exact appearance of a medieval plague doctor. 49 appears to be wearing thick robes and a ceramic mask, indicative of the time and occupation. However, the garments aren't garments at all, but skin. Yeah. 49's body over time is now indistinguishable from its previous human form. 49 was discovered during an investigation after a number of unknown disappearances in South France. During a raid, investigators found 49's lab and what their quote specialty is. Law enforcement busted in as 49 sat and watched the officers as they took pictures of the so called torturous mad science lab it had created. Yeah, you don't want to know about the experiments they were doing. 49 willingly entered the foundation's custody after that, which is creepy in itself. Some sort of sinister agenda, maybe. 49 has a humanoid skeletal skull beneath the outer layer, and the doctor talks in many tongues. It prefers Old English or Medieval French. While 49 is generally cordial and cooperative with the foundation, staff, it can be extremely irritated and aggressive if it feels the presence of pestilence, hence the disappearance during the pandemic. Hmm. It will become hostile with people it deems as sick, cold, flu, or under the weather. 49 is going to generally attempt to study anybody if they're showing signs of infection. 49 causes failure of biological functions of any organism it touches through direct skin contact. How this occurs is currently unknown, and autopsies of 49's victims has been inconclusive. The pestilence is what seems to drive the doctor to live, though will usually aim to perform crude surgeries on living specimens using implements of an unknown era contained within a black black ominous doctor's bag. Yeah. Their journals are not written in any known language and attempts by linguists and codebreakers to decipher them have been unsuccessful. While these surgeries are not always successful, they often result in some sort of morbid creation. Okay, so this doctor is like wanted, wanted. Apparently after a botched dissection of an orangutan, the doctor has yet again breached containment seeking specimens for research. Investigators need your help to find them. If you see a plague doctor roaming the streets, make sure you first off keep six feet of distance if you have a cold. That's all I'm saying, you know? And call the foundation. Number Four, the Water Nymph. Yeah, we're not talking about Ariel from The Little Mermaid. SCP-054 has breached containment and we're not really sure if we're ever going to be able to find her again. Out of the water, the subject most often appears as a female humanoid with an unearthly bodily volume of 90 liters of liquid made entirely of water. Yeah, you'd be able to see her if she's out of the water. She's pretty massive. When she enters a body of water, however, which they think she's retreated to, she becomes next to invisible. Yeah, like pouring a glass of water into another glass of water. That's not good. The subject must periodically return to a body of water in order to maintain its volume due to evaporation. Okay, so maybe global warming could actually help us here. Initially found in a classified lake, she was moved to the foundation indefinitely. Initially curious about the foundation personnel and what their mandate for the human race is, it's documented she seemed to enjoy interacting and studying staff, mimicking their forms, learning our languages, and understanding our way of life. She was held in a watertight isolation room outfitted with specialized climate control equipment, a massive fountain filled with water and a rather homely facility. Maintenance personnel are required to wear PPE at all times inside the containment area and must spend at least 10 minutes in a special drying room after exiting. As documented with her last breach, the surrounding area was evacuated and the enclosure was flushed with liquid nitrogen, freezing every molecule of water in it. However, no nymph. Yeah, that's not good. No thermal, electromagnetic, biological, or other phenomenon has been detected in its body that would suggest how it lives or thrives. The last experiment with 54 was halted after two researchers were seriously injured when she exhibited signs of mistrust and aggression, and all of a sudden she pulled the researchers under where they almost drowned. She has been updated to a new class system, and authorities are still searching for her. Yeah, you might need the Navy on this one. How would you even be able to see her? Well, I guess goggles and a snorkel. So, number three, the homunculus. SCP-030's appearance is that of a hairless, genderless, gray-toned humanoid, 28 inches in height and weighing around 25 pounds. Its solid blue eyes lack discernible irises or pupils and resemble small sapphires. 30 possesses an androgynous voice with a pronounced English accent. It is able to converse, read, and write in ancient Greek, Latin, Italian, English, as well as two additional languages that have yet to be identified. Well, that's absolutely terrifying. 30 has also demonstrated knowledge of physics, chemistry, astronomy, mathematics, roughly equivalent to that of a 17th century academic. 
30 has demonstrated knowledge on these topics involving classified science. 30 needs at least 15 lumens of light or greater, or it becomes unconscious and showing no signs of life. Okay, that's a good no. Maybe we can use that to find them. Within five to 10 seconds of being re-exposed to light, 30 becomes active, appearing to be coming out of a sleep state, no matter how long the period of inactivity has been. 30 does not require sleep and has expressed a desire to remain awake as often as possible. Hmm, I wonder why. 30 requests new materials for personal research every 90 days, and all materials are to be collected and destroyed prior to delivery of the new materials. All materials are to be evaluated, and 30 is to be absolutely under no circumstance granted access to any modern scientific journals or texts. Apparently, 30 has become untrusting and escaped the Foundation's perimeter after learning there has been more updated scientific study since the mid 1600s. All right, who let it slip, huh? Was it you? Might be Chris, I think it was. 30 is now on a scientific learning spree, and who knows what they're gonna learn in that time. Somebody turn the lights on on this thing, okay? We need like a week long eclipse so we can find them. Number two, antimatter. SCP-213 is an adolescent humanoid male, 4'9", tall, weighing 200 pounds. 213 is able to forcefully sever the bonds between atoms and any solid matter with physical contact. An intense flash of light is produced while doing this. 213 can use any body part of its body to manifest this effect, and has used it to disintegrate projectiles as they impact its body. Yeah, that's like shooting BBs at a bear. This effect has proven to be extremely painful for 213 with extended use. 213 was just recovered from California when reports of a teenage boy arrested for homicide after vaporizing his girlfriend. Yeah, that sounds like the start to an X-Men episode. Agents in the local police department arrested and contained him as soon as authorities were called. Investigation revealed 213 holds anomalous properties that are yet to be understood by our knowledge of modern physics. During the initial containment and arrest, 213 vaporized two agents attempting to secure him. 213 was contained in a high security humanoid containment cell within a classified floor of Site 77. Yeah, major stuff. 213 should not be emotionally triggered during containment. Manifestation of its nuclear effect was on its brink when authorities reached the cell. During a routine physical examination, lesions were discovered on the back. There are four nodules now placed in a perfect square. A follow-up examination has led to the discovery of two more nodules located in the center of its palms. With the recent investigation, agents have deemed 213 to be evolving, and now a Keter classification. During the escape, 213 vaporized two more guards after having a seizure in its containment cell. After a quote, implosion. The matter surrounding its body and the molecules around it have vanished. If you have any further information surrounding a glowing radioactive teenage boy around town, just call the foundation immediately, would you? And number one, Baba Yaga. SCP-352 appears to be a very old, very emaciated woman of unknown age and race. 352 speaks Russian, but with an accent and dialect that makes translation very difficult. 352 is extremely unwilling to communicate with mostly threats or statements of revenge. Yeah, she's mean. 352 has never identified herself by name, and due to her aggressive nature, it has been impossible to determine any background information. 352 possesses a level of strength and speed much higher than what should be possible for any person of her perceived age and physical dimensions. Moving things of 500 pounds with little effort and moving at speeds in excess of 70 kilometers an hour. That's fast. 352 can recover from lethal wounds, including decapitation and disembowelment. Regeneration can take between days to several weeks, depending on the severity. Internally, 352 appears to be a normal human woman with muscles, bones, and organs, but after recent testing was done on a tissue sample, she's capable of growing a hair like cilia anywhere on her body at will. They have been observed crawling along floors and even up walls and ceilings. These hairs are sticky, identical to the enzymes in our saliva. This enzyme reacts on contact with human tissue and rapidly attacks the nervous system. Symptoms include hallucinations, euphoria, suppression of logical thinking, and suppression of pain receptors. She appears to be a carnivore with a strong preference, unfortunately, for human flesh. 352 will create a giant web of hair and saliva and just wait for their prey to become trapped and docile. 352 was last seen in her web inside the containment cell. Researchers were studying her cilia-like hair when they became entranced and were found limbless in a quite happy state. Her last location is unknown. Yeah, she's obviously the number one spot, of course. She's a spider witch on the loose. Yeah, that's definitely gonna get the FBI's attention. Apparently, reports of an enchanted forest and a witch who have caused several deaths have surfaced in Russia yet again. Foundation agents are on scene, and apparently the forest has become more of a layer. Yeah, awesome. 
So there's a half spider, half witch with superhuman strength just dragging people up walls and into enchanted forests. Okay. Yeah, this sounds like Stan Lee's gonna need to help us out on this one. What do you think? Five on this list is Project Iceworm. Project Iceworm honestly sounds like a pretty cool name. This project deals with the big nukes and moving them. As we will see later in this video, the government clearly wasn't too good at that. Anyways, Stacker says, Desperate to gain an edge over the Soviets in any way possible, the United States built a state-of-the-art underground nuclear power research facility called Camp Century in the remote tundra of Greenland. The US toured this facility to the press. What they didn't mention though was Project Iceworm, the plan to build 2,500 miles of tunnels underneath the ice sheet that would be used to shuttle nuclear missiles back and forth, evading Soviet's attempts to destroy them. Over time, the project was cancelled and Camp Century itself was abandoned. Now, with Greenland's ice melting due to the climate change, scientists have raised concerns about the radioactive material that once powered Camp Century eventually returning to the surface. Think about that, folks. 2,500 miles of tunnels specifically to move nukes around. A bunker passageway that nobody knows about. Now, this project specifically didn't happen, but who's to say that something similar hasn't already taken place? How do we know that the US government, or honestly any government for that matter, hasn't built tunnels all across the world for these weapons. If they were actively looking at doing this back then, then what's to say that they haven't figured it out with some other place in the meantime? Like, what if you're watching this video right now, a massive nuke as you're doing so is just being transported directly underneath you and you have no idea about it. Pretty scary stuff to think about, especially if one of those nukes decided to go off. Number four on this list is Project MK Ultra. I feel like you guys have probably heard about this one before, but we have to touch on it again. This was one of the most messed up things done by the FBI, and it needs to get discussed in the media a lot more. Stacker says, the designation of Ultra was given to the most secret projects and documents used by the government during World War II. In 1953, during the early years of the Cold War, Project MK Ultra was sanctioned as an ultra secret project to develop drugs and other practices for mind control of interrogated subjects. Many of its experiments happened on unwitting participants and were clearly illegal, leading to the international controversy. This now declassified government project has been tied to many conspiracy theorists, but documents definitely point to experiments around animal mind control and hallucinogens. So these super illegal drugs that the government wouldn't let the public take, they were actually out here forcing these people to take them for their sick experiments. These were not well done either by any means. They treated these people really horribly and put them through some terrible treatments. Many of these people lost their minds for good and could never recover to their former selves. And because this wasn't released to the public for so long, these people never got the help that they needed or the justice that they deserved. For all we know, crazy experiments like this could be going on right now under our noses with completely different drugs that we don't even know about yet. Really scary and sad stuff. Number three on this list is Nixon's treason. Richard Nixon is the former president of the United States. Oftentimes, we don't really expect former presidents to be committing treason to their country, but that could be what happened here. Stacker says, when the telephone calls of President Lyndon B. Johnson were declassified, it was revealed that then candidate Richard Nixon negotiated with South Vietnam behind the president's back. South Vietnam withdrew from the Paris peace talks after being told that Nixon would help them get a better deal once elected. Nixon was concerned that an early end to the war would derail his election campaign since the Vietnam War was a pressing campaign issue. Nixon ended up winning the election by less than 1% of the popular vote. So yeah, he really shouldn't have been doing that if this was the actual case. Literally going behind the current president's back and already trying to make his bed for when he can become the president. Pretty shady if you ask me. I guess that's why this was a secret for so long, because the FBI felt the same way. Number two on this list is the Thule Bomb. Nukes are pretty valuable, or at least they're very important, and keeping track of them and their whereabouts is equally important. Well, that's exactly what the American government did with the Thule Bomb. Stacker says, during the Cold War, the American army base in Thule, Greenland, was patrolled continuously by planes armed with nuclear missiles. After one of the planes went down, the public believed every bomb therein had 
had been accounted for. Declassified documents revealed that one nuclear bomb was in fact never found. While that may sound scary on its own, missing nuclear bombs and nuclear scares are frighteningly common. Now, one would think this would be a pretty big deal, but apparently not. Apparently the Americans just sort of went along with their day and let it lie. But like, that's kind of messed up I think. Literally a massive weapon, one that could destroy entire cities and end people's lives is just, oh, I don't know, somewhere. Like it's just around. Obviously the United States couldn't let the public know about this at the time because they would have freaked out. So what did they do instead? Well, they swept it under the rug and just pretended that it didn't happen for a few decades until quietly declassifying the documents much later. Imagine if this thing is just at the bottom of the ocean somewhere and some shark decides to bite into it one day. Boom, massive explosion that could destroy tons of ecosystems that we didn't even see coming. Or even worse, this bomb is in the hands of some criminals or some governments that we don't want to have it. Now we just granted some people nuclear power who we really don't want to have that sort of power. Really not super ideal here by the US government. If I was them, I'd get back to searching and not stop until I find this thing. And number one on this list is the My Lay Massacre. We've talked about this massacre on this channel before, but it has to be touched upon again because of how brutal it actually was. Stacker says, in one of the darkest moments of American military history, US military forces opened fire on the citizens of My Lay, a small hamlet in Vietnam, killing hundreds of civilians. The savagery included the eventual destruction of the village. More than a year passed before Cleveland's plane D newspaper published Ron Harebrill's photos of the destruction, revealing the massacre to the world. A declassified government report details the extent of the violence Americans wrought against the Vietnamese and the government's process in inquiring about the events that took place. War is war, and it's horrible in its own right, but this was outside of war. These were civilians who weren't fighting back, but just happened to be caught in the midst of this terrible conflict. They didn't deserve this. Honestly, nobody deserves something like this. The government kept quiet about this for a year until they finally owned up to what happened. They knew that the second that this got out to the public, there would be a public outcry, and there was. Just a horrible occurrence that never should have happened. Number five on this list is D.B. Cooper. This is one of the craziest cases ever, and honestly, when I was reading it, I had to confirm that it was actually real life. So back in 1971, on November 24th, a plane hijacking occurred. D.B. Cooper, who called himself Dan Cooper, boarded a plane from Portland to Seattle. While he was on the plane, he revealed to the stewardesses that he had a with him and he demanded that he get four parachutes and $200,000. Whether this was a real or just a fake is unknown because it never actually went off, but it was at least convincing enough to the people on board that they gave him what he wanted. The flight landed and he let off the passengers, but held on to the crew. Now that he had his money and his parachutes, he wanted a flight to Mexico or else he'd blow everybody sky high. This was agreed to and the plane took off for Mexico. It was dark at this point, but that was all part of Cooper's plan. While the plane was mid-air, Cooper took one of his parachutes and his money and he jumped straight straight out of the plane into the night. So that was back in 1971, and since then no one has ever seen or heard from him since. This disappearance is one of the most famous in history and something that's baffled the FBI since it happened. In 2016 they closed the case, but never really did find anything concrete about Cooper. Tons of theories have popped up over the years though about who he really was and where he went. The most popular and likely the most probable was that Cooper just died after he jumped out of the airplane. Either he didn't stick the landing or he died in the wilderness that he would have landed in. Alternatively though, people think that Cooper was actually a man named Robert Rackstraw who was a military helicopter pilot. There was a mild break in the case where in 2011 the niece of Lynn Doyle Cooper came forward and said that it was her uncle that did it as he planned the whole thing at a family gathering. But that could never be confirmed and the case has since gone dead. Number 4 on this list is the Phantom Barber. This was one of the strangest cases in history and remains unsolved to this day. In 1942, in a small town in Mississippi, there was a crime spree that happened which centered around a barber. A man who would break into homes and while people were sleeping, cut their hair off. They would wake up to these ridiculous haircuts, feeling very violated. These hair crimes persisted for a while until they escalated to violence. The home of Terrell Heidenberg and his wife was broken into and they were attacked by a man with an iron pipe. This same man was believed to be the phantom barber. This incident really ramped up the search for the man and somebody was eventually brought 
brought into custody. 57 year old William Dolan was arrested and charged with the crimes. In his home it was found that he had several samples of human hair. It also didn't help his case that he was a chemist and it was believed that the victims of the Phantom Barber were incapacitated with chloroform before having their hair cut off. This seemed like all the evidence needed until William Dolan actually passed a lie detector test in regards to the crime. Then accusations of the police work came out saying that they rushed the process and mishandled evidence. This led to William's eventual release which means that the Phantom Barber just totally disappeared. If William truly is innocent, then nobody has any idea of who this criminal was and why they were doing what they were doing in the first place. William has been the only credible suspect and the case has since gone dead after extensive investigation. Number 3 on this list is Alcatraz Escapees. Alcatraz is potentially the most famous prison in all of history. It opened in 1934 and then shut down only 29 years later in 1963. 29 years is not a super long time considering the notoriety that this place got, but it all makes sense when you factor in the people who used to call this place home. Al Capone and Robert Strode are just some of the most notable high profile inmates who used to stay here. Based on who was sent here and the overall geography of the prison in general, it quickly got the reputation for housing the world's most dangerous criminals. That's why it was so shocking when three people broke out in 1962. On June 12th of that year, the guards conducted a head count and realized that three people were missing. Frank Morris, John Anglin and Clarence Anglin were all nowhere to be seen. All three men have been involved with some very dangerous armed robberies over the years among other very illegal activities. The way that they escaped was truly ingenious. I don't have enough time to explain exactly how they did it in this video but it was a mixture of disguises and tunnels and just a bunch of incredible prison break stuff. Either way this sparked one of the largest FBI manhunts in history. The thing is they literally had no leads at all. It's tough for them to be witnesses when the prison that they're breaking out from is in the middle of the water. The FBI eventually closed the case, basically telling the public that they believe that the men died during their escape, drowning on their way to land. This is certainly possible, but over the years, people have said that they've seen these criminals out in public. These sightings never resulted in any capture though, and the fate of the men still remain a complete mystery. Number two on this list is the Sims Family Killer. Stacker writes, in 1966, the grisly murder of a prominent family rocked Tallahassee, Florida when 17 year old Norma Jeanette Sims returned home from a babysitting gig to find her mother, father and 12 year old sister bound, gagged, shot and stabbed to death. The case which changed the previously quiet community forever remains unsolved. Although a local pastor was long suspected, Leon County Sheriff Larry Campbell who was a 24 year old deputy and early responder that night has said he knows of two suspects who he believes did it although he refuses to name them to this day. Three Three people brutally murdered for no apparent reason. The Sims family was apparently admired by people in their community and had no real enemies. When investigators got to the scene, robbery was also ruled out immediately because nothing of value was taken. The biggest person of interest was a pastor that Helen Sims had recently stopped working for. The fact of the matter was though that nothing of any value was discovered in this case and even though it has been opened numerous times by various forms of law enforcement, the killer or killers could never be identified. Something like this just really reminds you how valuable life can be. A loving family taken far too soon for no known reason and the individual responsible was never even caught. And finally number one on this list is the Zodiac Killer. This is the type of thing that should keep us all up at night. The Zodiac Killer was a serial killer who was active in Northern California from 1968 to 1969. During their reign of terror this unidentified serial killer is believed to have murdered at least five separate victims. The Zodiac Killer claimed that they had 37 different victims, but that's not ever been confirmed. Wikipedia writes, The Zodiac originated the name himself in a series of taunting letters and cards that he mailed to regional newspapers, threatening killing sprees and bombings if they were not printed. Some of the letters included cryptograms or ciphers in which the killer claimed that he was collecting his victims as slaves for the afterlife. Of the four ciphers he produced, two remain unsolved and one took 51 years to crack. While many theories regarding the identity of the killer have been suggested, the only suspects authorities ever publicly named was Arthur Leah Allen, a former elementary school teacher and convicted sex offender who died in 1992.
All of the evidence that has pointed to Alan being the killer is circumstantial though. There was never anything that beyond a reasonable doubt could place him at the locations of the murders or make him the guy who did this. Many people think that it was him, but they could be wildly wrong. If they are wrong, which is still very likely, then this killer may still be out there on the loose. At number five, we've got Christopher David Muir. Most folks would expect a few murderers and drug runners to make the list, but what I find to be especially terrifying and heinous is the purposeful setting of expensive and harmful fires. That's right, we are kicking this list off with a serial arsonist who seems to have disappeared completely. Back in January of 2007, police began investigating crimes that caused over two million dollars in damages and made people genuinely scared for their lives. It wasn't just setting fires, it was also extortion. Apparently a father-son duo decided that some financial disputes were worth setting fires over. The father, Jonathan David Muir, was arrested and sentenced to 15 years in prison for planning these crimes. Christopher David Muir, however, is still in the breeze. He was the one to actually set the fires, making him a very destructive desperado. Police have spent over $400,000 investigating these crimes and have come up short when tasked with bringing the arsonist to justice. In fact, back in 2015, they renewed a $25,000 reward for anyone who could provide tips that would lead to Mir's arrest. Unfortunately, this big boon wasn't enough to bring him in. It doesn't seem like he's been setting any more fires though, which leads one to believe that the original crimes were committed as a personal vendetta of sorts. However, this blonde haired blaze setter could very well be planning another fire. Coming in at number four, we've got William Bradford Bishop Jr. That's one hell of a name, wouldn't you say? He's been on the run for quite a while too. The FBI has been chasing this murderous man since 1976 and has followed a lot of false leads down strange rabbit holes in doing so. See, Mr. Bishop was once an American diplomat. After spending years traveling to different posts overseas, he ended up working a post in Washington, DC. He'd been passed over for promotion and appeared to be feeling sort of ill. He left work and headed home. On the way to his family home in Maryland, he stopped by a bank to withdraw some money and a hardware store where he bought a sledgehammer, gas can, pitchfork, and shovel. Not a very promising array of items, is it? That evening, he used his new arsenal to kill his wife, mother, and three children. Afterwards, he buried their bodies in a shallow grave in a swamp and lit it on fire. Since then, he's been on the run. As an avid outdoorsman and an amateur pilot, he has a variety of skills that would help him avoid detection. They've proven to be quite effective too, as he remains at large to this day. In 2014, authorities believed that they had found a grave where his remains were buried, but the DNA didn't match. Mr. Bishop could very well be too old to commit more crimes, but a life on the run might encourage one to indulge in more criminal activities. Coming in at number three, we've got Vasilis. Paleocostas. With nicknames like Robin Hood and Uncatchable, you know this guy means business. Right now he's on the lam and has a 1 million euro bounty on his head. Crazy, right? Well, you'd have a bounty like that too if you'd escaped the same prison twice, both times by helicopter. Yeah, that's right. This man escaped from the high security Corridalos prison. Two pals of his hijacked a helicopter, landed it at the prison, convinced guards that they were prison inspectors, and then picked up Paleocostas. The helicopter then flew the fugitive to a nearby cemetery where he hopped on a motorcycle and made a speedy getaway. Two years later, he was recaptured and brought back to the prison. But guess what? No walls can hold the uncatchable man back. In 2009, another helicopter escape was pulled off, resulting in a short airborne gunfight and a clean getaway. No injuries, thankfully, and now he's a free man once again. Well, actually, a prison guard injured himself while trying to draw his weapon, but we'll check that up to something else entirely. The helicopter pilot was found bound and gagged in the empty cockpit a while later. He detailed a cover story that the escapees gave to him. They'd even chartered the helicopter multiple times in the weeks leading up to the escape to make it seem sort of normal. No other real details have been found. To this day, this robber kidnapper escapee remains on the run. Imagine having friends willing to fly a helicopter into the same prison twice for you. What a life. Coming in at number two, we've got Glenn Stewart Godwin. We've got more prison breaks here. This escapee seems to be a lot more violent than our last culprit though. Glenn Stewart Godwin escaped from Folsom State Prison in California in 1987. He'd been serving a lengthy murder sentence for stabbing a drug dealer slash pilot dozens of times. Somehow he managed to get a variety of tools smuggled in cut his way through a fence, crawled through a storm drain, and ended up making his way down to a raft that his accomplice left for him. Later that very same year, he was arrested again for trafficking drugs in Mexico. This earned him a one-way ticket to a prison in Guadalajara. And when I say one way, I do mean until he broke out. That's right, there are two double prison breakers on this list. Some people are just really good at certain things. 
For these folks, apparently that's breaking jail. While serving his sentence in Mexico, Godwin apparently killed a fellow inmate before hightailing it out of there a few months later. Can you imagine the amount of work it would take to escape a prison after literally murdering someone there? Like, the guards would definitely be keeping a close eye on him and he still managed to make it out. Sure, murder is bad, but that's impressive. These days, he's suspected to be playing some role in the drug trade in Latin America. Aliases have been used, but no solid evidence has been found. And finally, at number one, we've got Matteo Messina Denaro. Before going into hiding in 1993, this mafia-connected maniac claimed, I fill the cemetery all by myself. Known as the last Mohican of the old mafia, Denaro has extensive connections who are willing to keep him hidden. Not something you want to hear about a deadly killer, but that's just how the world works sometimes. After racking up over 50 murders, he went underground. It appears that plenty of politicians and businessmen are willing to bankroll his hidden lifestyle too. He supposedly lives quite the luxurious lifestyle these days. In fact, a wind farm tycoon was recently brought down for having Denaro on his bankroll. That's the kind of power this potential mafia boss holds. If money wasn't enough to shield him, he's also got some wicked connections. According to prosecutors and investigators, Denaro has been shielded by Freemasons in Trapani. And I mean, if the mafia alone was something you didn't want to mess with, then you definitely don't want to add the Freemasons in there. Maybe he's backed by the Illuminati too. So. Has anyone seen any of these men? I hear there's a nice reward for you if you have. I don't know. I feel like I'd rather live my life without a criminal grudge against me. Maybe making this video was a mistake.